YouTube, today's video, we've got Dignity versus Lambo. This is in the RHG, or Red Hot Gaming Tournament, hosted by Dubby. This is off of Dubby's stream. If you guys aren't uh, following Dubby, I'll leave links to his stuff in the description. If you want to go watch the entire tournament, the VOD is up on his stream as well. Wanted to do kind of a film room today, just breaking down Dignity. I thought Dignity was one of the more underrated players uh, kind of coming into the tournament. As far as playbooks for both of these guys, I'm pretty sure that they are both in the Colts offense of playbook and the Chiefs defensive playbook. Lambo is going to be the Bears and Dignity is going to be the Chiefs. So right here, kind of doing what everybody does, just you know, basically setting audibles uh, with the uh, with the uh, gentleman's agreement to decline the penalty. What makes Colts playbook really good, honestly, is 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 it does have a it has the best bunch in the game, but it also has. Uh, bunch strong nasty really good formation but it also has a ton of rpos and specifically rpo reads which make it really really good in the red zone now right off the bat just going to kind of break down kind of the foundation of both of these guys uh, schemes and kind of the chess match of what's going to be going on here so it appears to me that because of debo samuel here to the right that dignity is rocking probably a 70 out of 70 super bowl theme team uh, maybe with some 25 combine because of bo jackson here so that's probably the theme team that he is utilizing the other thing that I want to quickly point out is the alignment that Lambo comes out in. He comes out into play spinner out of dollar. The reason we know this is because if you look at these safeties here, they are closer to the line of scrimmage than uh, they would be if this was like a baseline press defense. And then the other thing that you notice is these corners. A lot of people, these corners will be kind of on the outside edges. In this defense, he's actually going to be pressing these up. So going to be kind of interesting to uh, watch that. And probably more than likely, Lambo has his match coverage set to on, which is going to allow him to put this guy in an outside third, but he gets a really good press animation on solo wide receivers. And then last but not least, we're going to be running probably the spinner blitz, where it's going to feature this really nice A-gap rusher right here, and then these really two good slot corner uh, pressure is probably, in my opinion, the most versatile way to blitz in this game, utilizing uh, spinner because you can bring the pressure from the middle, but you can also bring the pressure from the edge. Okay, and then obviously they're kind of peaking abilities, pretty standard abilities. And we're going to start out with double post from the Colts playbook. Um, and we are in the middle hash. So you see that Dignity is going to bring a drag route across middle field. Primarily, probably, if he gets a blitz like this, for example... And let's say we get a coverage defense like this, which is pretty popular. This drag is going to be open for a quick read right here. And then also, if he has time in the pocket, we've got a little double post route that can potentially get in a nice window against cover three. So that's kind of probably what he's looking for off the snap here. You see there's that jam. We get crazy pressure from Lambo, but the tight end to the flat is wide open. Should take that, get his easy yardage. And you see that this is kind of the beginning of the chess match. All right. The next thing that you're going to see Dignity do is audible to trips tied in. We talked about this in the film room I did against Vos. One of the best ways to counter spinner is to audible to trips because it messes up the alignment of the defense. As you can see here, a lot of things going on. He goes to a simple street corner flat combo, able to hit that. I really haven't seen a lot of people run that play this year. Dignity goes to it and uh, gets a good gain and gets the first down out of it. So, and also utilized uh, some motion blocking to help pick up the pressure. Now, Dignity kind of runs a unique Colts, I would say. Like, this is tight, wide off week. We don't see this play, uh, this formation a lot this year. I haven't seen a lot of people. This is post-wheel drag. Tight, wide off week is very similar to tight slots. The major difference in the formation is these guys are a little bit more outside, and also this guy is not off the line of scrimmage, so it can mess with the timing of uh, some of the corner routes and things like that. But essentially here we have post will drag. So I'll talk about kind of what he's looking for. Basically what we're looking for here is we're looking really for the short corner to the tight end. If he plays cover three to the right side, this short corner will be wide open over here. If the user runs to the right, then we'll probably work the backside post over the middle of the field. So that's basically the combo. Um, and we'll see here, see there, the tight end post is wide open, throws it, gets a nice possession catch. Possession catching is really important, especially with the KOs that we've been facing with this game. And right now, Dignity looking, you know, pretty good offensively, um, really just making simple reads, playing really, really well. Here we have a little slant or a little drag post with a hitch in the middle. I don't love that hitch in the middle. I'm not sure why he did that, especially in that position. If you were going to run a hitch, I'd probably run it to the middle trips receiver, 
but maybe he was just anticipating a hard flat, so he's going to take advantage of the yellow zone and put the user in conflict. This is smash return. Didn't he also play in fairly up-tempo uh, with this? But And you're seeing him kind of mix up, you know, going to different formations and there, and, and really just running a lot of, you know, for lack of a better word, money plays, specifically, you know, designed to attack the spinner defense with uh, smash return there. Uh, typically, spinner is either a man-to-man -man or cover three base defense. So by using simple flood concepts, you can uh, manipulate it really, really well. Right here, going to go to this little inside zone split. A lot of guys that are in Colts love this run uh, this year and uh, does do a really, really good job. He's going to go to this gun wide off trips. Don't see a lot of people run this formation, but we're basically looking for this little bubble screen right here. We have a backside slant. You see the slant was actually wide open to the right side. A lot, that's a pretty hard reader to make. A lot of people are really just looking, is the bubble screen open? If it's not open, I'm just going to hand it off and you know, basically check in the next play. He's going to now set up a single back wing slot with the we, we know as one of the best red zone formations in the game with this little bubble screen. So real quick, Lambo is going to have to make a decision. How am I going to defend this? More than likely, this is going to be a man up here, which is going to make the stretch run um, less defenders be able to come over here and play the stretch. So this is a pretty standard red zone setup. And we also will go to jet sweep from time to time, which he's going to go to here, this little jet sweep. But he is going to motion out of it, goes to a little zone play, breaks a tackle, and kind of got a free touchdown, honestly. Didn't feel like that was really open, but he did break the tackle, and that's why you run the ball inside the five because you can get a lot of um, you can get a lot of fluke like that to occur. All right, so dignity as far as defensively, basically Chiefs defense. We've got Dollar and we've got six one. I think at this point in the year, those are the two clear cut defenses. Um, my personal opinion, I think six one is really good right now if you can handle RPOs. So. You know, if you run 6-1, you're going to get a lot of RPOs. But that being said, I've got ebooks on both of these, fully updated, fully optimized offensive and defensive ebooks, both for the Colts playbook and 6-1 in dollar, as well as other defensive ebooks and other offensive ebooks on my Patreon page. It's only $10 to be a member if you want to sign up. Link's going to be in the description. It gets you access to everything. Literally everything I know about Madden you get for $10. Um, so it's a great way just to get the knowledge, be able to come better. Uh, that way kind of gets you a, a head start on on uh, becoming a better Madden player. So here we go, 6-1. Should see an RPO read bubble right out of the gate here. Yep. And a uh, couple reasons for that. Number one, because uh, we're trying to get on a hash. And number two, because we know that 6-1 specifically is going to struggle uh, with RPO. So here we get a little kind of makeshift cover two, invert defense. Actually really good. I love the way that's actually, even though he's going to get out of there and get, get a touchdown, I want to talk about this. So 6-1, uh, what we have here is we have a cloud flat here. This is really good, especially he has a chance to go KO this, this route right here. He also can defend the C or the corner strike corner. So all we have to really do with our user now is we did a, a flat over here and a backside hook curl that's probably shaded down, okay? So this is going to take away things like a little drag to the tight end, that kind of stuff. What we get here is a crossing route, and that is the purpose of this deep half. This deep half is supposed to take away a small throwing lane right here and force you to have to make a tighter throw over here to the sideline. And it's also really good for defending the double post uh, post route as far as the cover three. So you see at this point right here, he sees, okay, this guy's in a half. If he throws this right here, this is a KO pretty much every time. So what he does is, he, you see here, he throws it a little bit early. It's actually maybe a really good free form, but I just feel like it's a, it's a really tight play, and this could have very easily been a KO. Uh, but instead, he racks it, gets up field, and uh, is able to actually to get in the end zone on a quick play. So nice play by Lambeau. I feel like that was still good defense. I wouldn't change that up too much. I'd force him to have to throw that consistently because I do think that was a hard uh, throw. Lambeau in in patented Lambo fashion in a big game decides we're going to miss the extra point. And um, there you go. Me and Lambo both struggle with kicking field goals. It's the little things guys. All right. So uh, verts half back under here and we're going to be going to a little motion over vert. This is probably going to be a variation of Durham. It is. So what you can do uh, this year's game with the bunch offset, the running backs here, you don't want to put him on a streak before you move him. You want to move him first, I believe, and then you want to put him on a, high, a running back streak. Otherwise, the streak will like run like this, which is not really that effective. So again, motion over, you get this right here. And now this is basically Durham. 
Uh, and why would we run this play? Well, last number one, we're in the middle of field. So we want a nice versatile play like Durham that isn't really hash mark dependent. Number two reason why we run this play is because we're going to put this defender in a lot of conflict. If he goes to the flat, the running back is liable to be open. If this defender blitzes, that means this defender now is the conflict player. And if he goes back, this becomes wide open to the flat. So uh, some really nice quick reads here to the right. And then we're able to basically have attacking uh, three levels of the field here to the left side. So I really love this setup. It's one of my favorite plays in the game. And I actually did a whole video breakdown on this on the channel where I ran this play for an entire game and tried to master the read. So right off rip, what do we get? Exactly what I said. Uh, Lambo's tendency, this was last drive. Lambo does the same thing on the first play of this drive that he did last drive, which is he calls cover three out of spinner here, or uh, he calls spinner, puts this guy on the third, blitzes this guy, Blitzes this guy, blitzes, 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 because he's trying to gas him up, get a lot of pressure here. And then it appears like we're maybe playing cover two here to the right side. So at this point, what we're really looking for is probably this tight end drag because the user is kind of trying to take away this little quick throw right in this little window. Okay, that's probably what he's looking for here. You see there it is cover two. If he if he had a little bit more time. Uh, this could be a potential big play over the top, but does a really nice job of just taking what the defense gives him, gets up field, and we know with the jukes this year, that could have very easily been, you know, maybe a juke inside, jurdle, whatever, getting some extra yards. I like seeing Kyle Pitts as the tight end of choice here. Um, I'm actually thinking about going back to Kyle Pitts. Here we go to a, an interesting double post setup. I want to uh, just kind of highlight this one. We got the tight end on the corner, uh, the short corner. That's He actually had the double post post for a touchdown right there. Let me explain why you would do this. When you put this tight end on a short corner, and let's say this guy's on a streak, the route stems to a degree kind of look like the double corner setup out of bunch where this guy would be running a deep corner route. So what you can do, especially if you have a nice little like basic drag or even a C route, we know that this defense really likes to put this guy in a third, right? So what we can do is we can put this guy in conflict on the backside and we can put the user in conflict over here. So this is what makes this so good because it attacks a lot of space on the field. It's really good against cover three in particular. And so what you're going to see here is a streak, this little kind of fan out, and then this double post. And then this short corner, which is designed to either pull the user this way, or if he is in cover three, a lot of times we know that these short corners can get open uh, to the right side against cover three coverages. So, and then we have, of course, a backside drag that does a couple things for us. Number one, it gives us a, a hot read if he does blitz this and this guy. And number two, if this guy's in a third, it'll kind of hold him down so that then we can throw this deep post over the top, okay? So this play is extremely versatile, really good setup, and I want to just kind of break this down. So you see here, right off rip, we get a send three. So we're going to have plenty of time because we blocked the running back, right? So then off rip right here, we see this guy go this way. At this point, we know that if the user does not go back, this is a touchdown over the top, okay? 100%. Touchdown over the top. So you see right here, look at the user, and he chooses over here, right? So watch the post route. You see the post is going to cross the face of the safety. As you see right here, that's a touchdown right there. Completely misses it and uh, maybe just wanted, I don't know why, I just think he just missed the read, honestly. Ends up making a much harder throw into, it's not quadruple coverage, but there's four bare jerseys to the right side of the screen. We also have the drag wide open. Um, which the user is banging back down on the drag. But again, this is a touchdown. So anyways, throws the ball to the sideline. It's still kind of open, gets a bad animation, and is his first incompletion, really his first mistake offensively. The reason I kind of spent so much time trying to highlight that is I wanted to try to highlight, guys, that even at the best levels of the game, I think Dignity is one of the best players in Madden 24 right now. Um, I actually played him before. He's a really good Madden player. And here comes right back and hits it with a touchdown, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But even at the highest of levels, the best players in the world make mistakes, right? They make mistakes. Madden is a game of execution. You have to execute. And I think that is such an underrated thing about Madden. It's why film study is important because the more you understand not only what the pro comp, uh, co 
pro level players are doing, but also why they're doing it and maybe what they're missing. It will teach you how to be better yourself. Okay. So uh, we're going to go to the setup dagger. Now, what we just did was we attacked over in this area. So chances are maybe he wants to try to attack over in this area, right? To kind of maybe change it up a little bit. And we've seen a lot of moving this defender over into like a cross man type of type of situation. So dagger, we have this really nice fade. We have this uh, slot crosser, which is going to be kind of that deep point of the field. We have a little drag that's going to attack kind of in these two pockets. And then we really have a check down that's going to attack right in here. So basically what's going to happen is our first read is always this snap throw streak. And if the safety goes that way, we know that the snap throw streak is available. So right off rip, that's kind of what we're looking at right here. See here, boom, see this guy move inside. Now what's really crazy to me is this is a hard flat or a cloud flat of some type. Maybe his plan was to user this, but... He doesn't use it for long enough or good enough. And so as you can see here, see how he stops? I just think that's odd because there's so much real estate right there to throw the ball over the top, which he does. That might have been a quarter, actually, the way that, safe, that safety reacted. But big play over the top, and uh, Dignity gets, gets uh, seven. So now back in the same situation, and we're back in 6-1. Love this. want to talk a lot about 6-1. I think 6-1 is good. Really good, really fun way to play defense right now, too. It's kind of a old-school way to play. And uh, I want to talk briefly about what Lambo just did. So, bunch offset. We're just playing basic cover two, send six. The send six out of six one is really good, but one of the things that is starting to come out as a really good counter to six one is this little block and release route to the tight end. Now, this could be a block and release fade, a block and release drag, even a block and release flat. These little, uh, this little block and release right here, and you probably see here too, a block and release flat. These are really good for blocking this blitz because it messes up really the blitz angles of everybody up front. So what you'll see here, you see it looks like he max protects, right? And this is maybe just like verticals with a crosser. But watch the tight end, late. See, he's gonna chip which gives him time, and then he's going to clear out, and the delay fade <laughs> is still around in Madden and actually very helpful for dealing with 6-1 in particular. So good adjustment. Here we see another audible that's fairly common. A lot of people like to go to trips against this. This is another reason why I think Colts is really good because Colts has so many RPOs. Get a little corner out to the deep sideline. Good read. Ran that corner out terribly, um, which is something that Joker Kale has been talking about on Twitter about how some receivers want run corner routes fast and sharp, and some receivers run corner routes slow and delayed. And here you see Dignity change up his defense. He's going to go to Dollar. He's going to go to the double safety defense. And honestly, this is a little bit of a matchup problem for Lambeau. Dignity has probably watched some film of Lambeau going into this game. He probably has a general idea of what he wants to do and how Dignity wants to counter what he's going to do. And one of the things we've seen Lambo struggle with previously in other tournaments is this double safety defense. It's hard defense to beat if you're mixing up your coverages. And this is, our, in my opinion, the most versatile defense in the game because it allows you to get, get really good alignment, in my opinion. You can, you can literally do everything out of this defense. You can Mabel out of it. You can send heavy pressure out of it. You can play man coverage well out of it. There's a lot of really good things to this defense. Here, I didn't love that uh, goes to spinner. I didn't love that man coverage call against Bunch Strong Nasty. Bunch Strong Nasty, that solo wide receiver is going to be on one of two or three routes. He's either going to be on a post route, he's going to be on a quick little streak that we saw Dignity throw in the last drive, or he's going to be on um, maybe like just some kind of like drag. That, that's pretty much it. Um, pretty much never do you see that solo receiver in that formation break to the outside. So to me, I don't love the man coverage because I just feel like that man coverage leverage out of spinner when you're baseline like that. He's so far outside. He can't really cover any of the things, you know, that he's going to ultimately run. Here we get a little rollout play. I hate people. I, I, I don't hate people, but I hate I hate 
uh, that offense. I hate wing slot. Wing slot is like the vein of my existence. I struggle, uh, especially against the rollout stuff. I think the rollout stuff is crazy right now with Bo Jackson being 99 speed. Uh, I think it just it just it's really not fun to play against, and people can really roll out with that stuff. So here we're gonna go to trips tight in week. This is probably gonna be a bubble screen to the right side. We're trying to get this guy to blitz in. This is a true RPO glitch, one of the glitchiest RPOs in the game. We'll see what Dignity does. He actually ends up calling a timeout. Um, and maybe his adjustments didn't register. Not sure. But let's see here. Second go. See if he does the same thing. Now we're going to go to flipped a flipped bunch to short side. Maybe dig return here. Let's see here. A little hitch. Hitch tight end corner. Not really available to him. Third and goal. And 6-1 is really good in the red zone. It's really good in the red zone because it just really closes the space off well. It's another reason why it stops to run well, closes off. And real quick, I want to show this coverage that he just did um, since he did show us the play art to kind of explain what he's doing. Uh, this is a really good defense for the, for the red zone. Okay, so what we have here is he's actually using soft squats, which is kind of interesting. Um, and he's probably using soft squats because they don't get pulled as bad as uh, cloud flats do in the red zone. But what we have here, these curl flats right here, they're probably uh, set to 20 yards. So what that means is these curl flats are going to take away this back corner on really both sides, which is the purpose of that. This flat right here is designed to take away like a quick flat, uh, running back to the flat, the soft will take that away. And then these vertical hooks are designed to take away these little dig return or these little hitches. So what this means for the user is the user is really responsible for this section of the end zone. So it really does a good job, covers the end zone well, and uh, it just really does a nice job of, of making it hard to score down here. So we'll see kind of how these, how these adjustments fare. And the sheds in 6-1 are so good. So as you see, and he gets an A-gap right there. Just right off rip, gets an A-gap. Good stop from him, third and goal. And, and that's going to be intentional grounding. Lambo, and you see there's the, the zone drop. So the flats was dropped to five. The curl flats were dropped to 15 or 20. And the hook curls were dropped to five. So it's very good defense for inside uh, the five-yard line. A very, very good red zone defense. Maybe doing a YouTube video on that and kind of explaining that uh, a little bit more here in the coming days. Trip side and offset, and here we go, Dignity. So he gets the stop. So now this is where Dignity can take a, a really good lead. About three minutes and 52 seconds. Ideally, he should run the ball as he does. The reason he's going to run the ball right there is because his whole idea on this drive is in a perfect world, Dignity is going to take the entire clock. Ideally, score seven. If he scores three, that's not terrible just by how he's been playing. He's been playing good defense this game. But he's going to be trying to work the clock and, and at least try to get as quickly as possible, get that clock under two minutes. That's really the goal here. Uh, by the time we're at about midfield, we really want that clock to be under probably two minutes. And then we're going to be getting into making sure that we're able to take Lambo's timeouts, which is going to allow us to use halftime basically as another form of getting a quick stop. He's been going to this setup a lot. It's one of his favorite setups for the way Lambo's playing. Block running back, a little flat there. Love that route. In this year's game, it's, it's, it's really been next gen as a whole. When they do a lot of, when they have the match coverage on, and really maybe sometimes even if they don't have it on, there's a lot of rerouting that occurs. Well, when they reroute, then that, that um, when they reroute the outside receiver in the bunch, then that means that the, Tight end flat is going to be wide open, so it's why having a tight end on a flat is a very good technique to be able to beat these blitzes because you can't really play cloud flats to the outside. So as you see, kind of what I said here, uh, we're about midfield. It's right at that two-minute mark. Pretty much executed very well here, second and eight. Now we definitely want to kind of get the first down here and just make sure that we're going to get ourselves into a scoring range. I, I think this is shallow cross. This is his version of mesh spot out of tight slots. So you see, you got the post, got the slant. I hate the slant this year. Um, and you see why, I mean, that's terrible. Like, look at this slant route. They just killed slants this year. You, you should not ever be running slants. Look at this slant, right? See, see how you got just barely bumped. And now instead of a slant attacking here, which really it's like, it's going to be right in there. Now this slant becomes a freaking 40 yard crosser with no clear out, it's basically dead. You can't throw it. So all he has to do as a user is basically take the square receiver and 
You know, I'd rather him. I'd just rather see a drag right there. Drags are so good in this year's game. He actually kind of gets bailed out just by by good pocket management, able to get out there, get a first down, puts up in a really good situation now to continue to take that clock. And now we're going to start to see Lambeau be in a position where he's going to have to strategically call timeouts in good places to try to get the ball back. So this should be a run pretty much every single time here. He's actually going to try to use her the RPO, plays pretty aggressive, gets him in a good down and distance. This is second and 12. And second and 12 in this situation, you can run it, but you're probably not going to. And then if Dignity throws an incomplete pass, then, you know, you see Lambo kind of have things in his favor. So this is a really good, uh, really important play. He's going to go to this wide trail. I actually don't like this play call because I don't because you don't want to throw the post. You don't want the big play here. Um, yeah, and I mean, you see here, he almost gets in trouble. He actually gets a crazy. Yeah, I mean, that to me, that wasn't a great play call and was really a kind of a lucky result um, to me. But, um, you know. Again, people make mistakes at the highest level. Every Madden game, you're going to make mistakes. It's it's a, mat, and a matter of, number one, can you limit those mistakes? And number two, can you learn from those mistakes? Not making the same mistake two or three times in a row uh, is really important as well. So uh, here you're going to go to, again, I just don't understand why we're running these bombs. So here's another bomb. Like, if I'm Lambo, I let him score. See, he does. He does. See, see that's actually smart. Okay. So this is important. And this is... This is um, I was, I was listening the other day to Dez talk about this. Dez was talking about how in, in head-to-head seasons, that's where you perfect like your plays, you learn the game, you learn the ins and outs of how zones work, how routes work, all that. When you get to these like high-level competitive tournaments, that's where you really want to learn how to win. All right, You need to learn how to win. And that's what separates like the best players in the world from you know top 100 Madden players. And I'm, you know, Dignity... Probably going to end up winning this game, but I feel like this puts him in a really bad position because, as you see, this is a bomb play. It's designed so that really this right here, if Lambeau runs cover three, this is wide open, and it's going to be a touchdown. We have 52 seconds on the clock, and Lambeau has two timeouts. To me, this route combo is designed to score in one play, just like the previous one was designed to score in one play. If you're Lambeau, you let him score. And the reason why is because then it becomes 20. And, and now you could make an argument Dignity is playing this way, maybe because he trusts his defense, maybe because he feels like he's just playing really good and Lambeau's struggling. And so he wants to try to make Lambeau throw a pick. There, there's an argument to be made there, but I just feel like both of these back to back play calls, this drag is your only read that allows you to take the clock. So all Lambeau has to do is sit right here, take this away. He forces you to throw this, which you're going to throw it, and you're going to score. And now look at the situation that Lambeau gets put in. So you see he scores. It's a great cover three beater. I've broken it down on the channel. But I just feel like it was a bad timing, bad timing for that play call, bad situational play call, because now Lambeau has plenty of time to go down and, and score. I mean, even if Lambeau gets three, he puts himself in a really good position to come make a comeback in the second half because he because you have to also remember Lambo gets ball out of half, uh, but here Lambo does something only Lambo can do. I mean this is terrible, and I guess maybe this proves me to be wrong here in this specific case. But you see we get Spinner, which is fine, it's good. Um, he's in bunch, so we know with bunch you know you this is this is a good isolation one on one. There's not a lot of routes that beat man one on one on the left side. He goes to double corner, um, and this just man coverage, it plays double corner well, especially if you can keep this contain and force a bad throw, which what happens. And this completely changes everything about the game. As you see here, he misses the throw. Pretty dumb decision by him. And one mistake somehow leads to another mistake, and now – now Dignity's in a really, really good position to be able to go up three possessions going into halftime and just completely changed everything about the game. So you got to throw that away if you're Lambo there and just eat it. It's ironic to me that Dignity's going to run the exact same play that Lambo just ran, except he's going to put a man-beating drag here. And, and <laughs> it's also ironic that uh, Dignity ends up throwing the ball away there. <laughs> yeah, this just basically completely changed the game. And I feel like Lambo was in a good position and I feel like Dignity made a big mistake to put Lambo in that good position. 
and Lambo did not capitalize. In fact, he really hurt himself significantly. So here we're going to go to basically a Durham setup, kind of. Basically the bunch strong, nasty variation of Durham. And situationally, if you're Dignity, field goal is fine. Field goal is fine. You just don't want to give Lambo the ball. And you're starting to see now, it's kind of interesting to me, but another thing that Dignity did a couple times in this game is like timeouts in interesting spots. I think that's fine timeout call there, but I think he just didn't know what he wanted to call. I feel like that happened to him a couple times too. But, I mean, you know, you're in a good position right here. I mean, this, you know, you're in a really good spot. Crosser wide open, good read, juke in. My goodness. That's just bad. <laughs> uh, it's just bad all around. The user gave up the one route that's a touchdown. I mean, just an interesting. So, I think this is just basic double Mabel. Basic double Mabel from, yeah, basic double Mabel kind of with the blitz behind. And eh, just not great defense by Lambo, honestly. I mean, there's just too many holes in that coverage for that situation, you know, you because you're not going to get the ball back. Like, you got to, like, that point just take away. Like, I feel like Lambo. some Madden players have talked about this before. This idea that you, like, press whenever you're in situations like Lambo was in. I feel like that happened twice. I feel like we threw a bad throw because we were pressed. We're trying to get back in the game. And I also feel like he um, – Oh my gosh, is that open? Oh my gosh, that's open. That's crazy. We got to look at that. So this is this a cover three cloud dot? Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. This is the middle of the field. So because it's on the middle hash, zones play differently in the middle hash. So what he does here is basically, I don't know what this is over here yet, but this is a streak and a corner. This is mesh flat spot. So the corner... You see, he takes this guy, and these streaks appear to me. It might have been just a uh, – actually, I bet you it was Dagger because he was using that fade on the left, maybe to detect cover two. So, I mean, that was almost a huge play. Uh, but, again, the biggest thing I was trying to say is I feel like in this game, in the last three or four minutes of the game so far in the first half, Lambo tried to basically win the game back in one or two plays – and it ultimately just really cost him. And Dignity made a couple of mistakes that basically let Lambo like, provided a pretty good opportunity for Lambo to get back in the game. And Lambo, I think, just didn't. You know, I mean, he ended up hurting himself more than he helped himself. So now, somehow, we get to the second half, a 28-9 game. Dignity's in complete control. I believe that is a 10, it's a 19-point advantage. So he's got a three-possession lead. Um, at worst, it's a two possession lead if Lambo scores here. So basically, all you're trying to do at this point, if you're Dignity, is you still want to play like your defense. You don't want to wholesale change anything you're doing because obviously it's working. But you also want to basically be mindful of you don't want Lambo to score in a play. Like you want to kind of keep the lid on. You don't want to give up like huge plays here. If you give up a flat or something, that's fine. But just this is again game management we're in cover zero sitting in the house you know and lambo's calling some weird plays too so i mean this is just it's just kind of like bad it kind of shows just like bad situation how situationally yeah like right here okay so one of the most popular plays in the game is verticals and we know that if we put this guy on a cloud and this guy on a half there is a huge window right here to throw the ball and get out of bounds so I just don't understand that call. Like, let's put a third here, third here, and let's roll this way that's a little safer, a little keep, more keep-the-lid-on type coverage. I just feel like this one, you know, and Dignity did this a lot, where, I mean, he's blitzing behind it, so I get it. But, you know, and maybe just Lambo called a good play. I just feel like I wouldn't have called that because in that spot, right, it's good defense, it's good defense in certain situations. But in that situation, you know, again, we're basically giving Lambo a big play, you know? So, now he hadn't called a lot of verticals either, so you could you could make that argument too. But Lambo is, the route combos Lambo's drawing up are one play touchdown or big play type route combos. Like he, you see here, it goes verticals again. Like we're not running a lot of short developing plays. So, part of that might also be why Dignity is blitzing a lot because he understands that 
the Blitz can help keep the lid on as well and force Lambeau into making a mistake. You know, so that's that's another thing here. Corner route. That's a hard throw. It's one of the hardest throws, I think, in the game to make. It's hard free form, that specific one, uh, because he's he's already close to the sideline. And so Lambeau not able to make that free form, third and seven. We're getting a lot of spinner. is isn't a lot of spinner. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, these are just bad reads. Like, look at this. Running back Texas. Like, look at the user. It's not even close. Ah. <sighs> I just, mm. you just see, man, like sometimes at the top of the top, they make these mistakes. Like, and that, and some of this has to do with how much have they been playing, uh, which I think is a very underrated aspect of the game. Like by playing Madden a lot, you should sharpen your reads. You should sharpen things like that. So that could be a factor uh, because we are in, in more of an off season. Ah, it's another bad read, man. Yeah, this isn't really... I mean, Lambo just missed a lot of reads this game. It's crazy. So 28 to 9, three possession game with ball, middle midway through the third. You're gonna see, you know, milk and cookies. We're gonna clock. You know, basically. That's the idea here. Um, I just and we're gonna go to this again. And now I just feel like it's like dignity's plan. I just don't understand the calls. It works. I mean, he's 14 to 16 for three touchdowns. Got a three-possession game against one of the best players in the world. But I feel like there's things that, you know, to be a little nitpicky, which I feel like is important when you're doing film work, there's some things he could have done a little better. And at this point, I mean, you know, the game is kind of in hand. So he's not really, like, sweating to take the clock. He's just trying to keep scoring, basically, and just continues to put the pressure on Lambo. You know, at this point, I feel like if Dignity gets a stop, it's pretty much GG's, but... This is 100% a, a, a keep alive drive, which Dignity's maybe playing like that. I mean, he's just, you know, putting, throwing water on him, throwing water, you know, he's, the Lambo's drowning in a sea of bad reads and missed opportunities, and Dignity is, you know, just pouring water on him. So that could be part of it, too. But I just feel like there's some little things that, you know, we all could learn from that. There's some things, like, situationally that you could, you could say he could have done differently. There's verticals again. Now he's running a lot of verticals. I would never run a half on the left uh, from the safety if he's running this much verticals. And I don't know what he did there. I was trying to throw the running back. Verts again. I mean, it's three straight plays of verts. And Lambo all of a sudden decided to wake up and <laughs> dot him up. So first and 10 from the 12 verticals again. Tight end. Touchdown. All right. So he scored. Can he get the onside? Goes onside kick here, catches it. Dignity able to get it, and he's going to get down. And now we should see a lot of clockwork. Another underrated reason why clockwork is good here is because he's winning by, is he winning? I think he's winning by 19 points. So if he, even if he gets three, he would be up by 22, which is three touchdowns in. Four minutes, very difficult to do, four or five minutes. So especially if you're playing a competent man player who's going to put good coverages out there, all that. Double corner. Oh, I've not seen this. Okay, I actually think that could work, though. You could motion in that other corner. That's an interesting comp uh, thing to think about there. All right, second and nine, ball in the 44. Should be a run here, trying to get the fourth. Did he call another timeout? I don't understand that. Now we have to now we have to now we have to call a play before yeah, I mean just feel like some bad clockwork. Throws a pick. Okay, gosh. I mean it's not a huge deal. The game's pretty much in hand, but it's like, man, like throw that right there. Boom. And you just you just missed it. Like the user was on the corner. Yeah, just don't love that pick. I mean, he's still winning, he's still all that, but again, you gotta, you know, every rep, win every rep. Win, win every rep, win every situation. My mentality, how can we get better? How can we improve? So I just feel like he missed that post early. DB fire, running back. Why is the running back open? Is he playing clouds on the outside? Let's take a look. Safety on the left. What's the safety do? No, he just didn't even put a – yeah, he didn't have anything over there. So running back. 
the reason you want to take that running back flat away is because he's able to throw that running back, and he does right in the next play good, and the crosser's open. See, that's another really underrated thing. When you're playing defense in Madden this year, especially this year with KOs and stuff and how good they are, when you blitz, if you just take away the quick reads and force them to throw into the KOs, those are hard throws to make under pressure. And I feel like that's something else that makes this little double safety defense really good is because you can blitz from it and, you know, basically either be in a cover two shell with clouds or a cover three shell with hard flats. And it really makes you have to throw the ball into tight windows. I feel like that's the biggest thing about this defense. We're going to do another breakdown. Uh, we did one on Dez already. And I, this really kind of Dez's. I don't know if he invented the defense, but I feel like he mastered the defense. This uh, double safety defense, what makes you, when you watch Dez play, what's so impressive is how tight the windows are. It really takes away a lot of throwing lanes that most people want to try to hit. And I think that's what makes it, you know, very good. So Lambo here, you know, off a pick, can get to a degree back in the game with seven. Um, see here, hitch, corner, wide open. Oh, that's a touchdown. Just got a bad animation. Just got a bad animation at the end of the day. Got to go for it here. Fourth and inches, 6-1, probably the, we see that same kind of basic concept from a coverage perspective, but we're going to man the tight end up in case he runs verts. We have a hard flat, curl flat. We're looking, basically, the user is going to be to the middle, to the bunch side. Uh, to the middle on the bunch side. we got the running back manned up for a little quick flat. Uh, and, oh, my goodness, nice read. Nice read. Nice read by Lambo. Basically, dig return. Kind of surprised with the coverage there. I don't, I don't think the tight end man up was necessary. I mean, I guess if they're running verticals. And I guess from where he was at. Ends up scrambling with Bo. And next play is going to get seven. So see what he does here. These are tight windows. The red zone dots to me are the most interesting. Look at this tight end crosser or tight end in route. That's actually a great throw. That's dig return with a tight end in route. This guy's your flat. So this guy comes in. So the user has to come over here because there's no yellow. And then it leaves this massive lane right here if you put the running back on a flat. I'm, I'm definitely uh, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that one. That's a good dot. That's a good dot for sure. So he's gonna go for he's gonna go for field goal. He's gonna he's gonna make the field goal. Okay, we always gotta check with Lambo. Oh, gets it onside. Uh oh. All right. So all of a sudden, <laughs> the thirty five nine became thirty five twenty three, and can potentially come thirty five to thirty. And Lambo, another important thing. And I talked about it ahead of time. Clock work. He has all the timeouts. He has everything. So if he scores here, all the pressure swings back to Dignity. All of it. Because there's plenty of time to get a stop. If he scores in about a minute and a half, there's plenty of time. Oh, he had him. Oh, my goodness. You cannot do this. This is the thing you can't do in the situation. Look at this. So we go with a, a Max Pro double pose setup. With probably a little delay drag, yeah. Okay, biggest thing here. We understand, number one, C route, but number two, this is going to be open, okay? If this dude's in a third, we know this is open. This is the number one play ran in Madden 24. Now you see, this guy sits. This is open, okay? Watch Dignity's user. Right there. Why do we care about that throw? That's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. And he just misses it, overthrows it. Could have been like an under pressure and accurate. David T would say you got to blew it. Regardless, cannot, like, you can't let them throw the most popular cover three bomb in the game. Ah, oh, you can't give that up. You just can't. So here we go to 6 1, probably to send six. Yep. 6 1, play cover two. Love this. And that's where I like the I like this because what six one does a good job of, in my opinion, is keeping the lid on and making you uncomfortable. Um, you see the disengage there right off bat. Good Lambo makes good dot, but it's good defense still. You'd like to see maybe the user get on that on that crosser a little bit more, but in general, this is good defense. And I like that he made this switch so that he can really send a lot more pressure and still keep the lid on. That's what six one allows. You don't, you know, you're not, it's not, it's six, one is more of a cover two based cover four based defense, not so much cover three. 
uh, just in terms of the way most of the shells are going to shape up. So I like I like this move here. Goes back to the safety blitz, and he dots the safety blitz, but gets a KO. And really late on that tight end read. Really late. Not sure why he did that. Third and 10. Um, again, I think some interesting combos, too. I guess basically just verts almost every play. Look at the user again go down. And I guess right there was fine because you had a cloud over there. I just would, like... Uh, I just really believe you got to keep the lid on, and he he totally gave that cover three bomb up. That was that was just a bad uh, and a bad accuracy. First and ten, DB fires and pressure, running back open. That's not bad for Dignity. I actually that's good defense because now you get him to the two minute, which makes it so that he can't stop a clock stop the clock um, in the event that he scores here. Okay. So that's that's fine. Um, Lambo had Lambo gone for two, he'd actually be in a lot better situation here as well. Kind of underrated, but uh, had, he, had he been going for two and not missed his field goal, you know, maybe it's what would that be twenty? That'd be fifteen, twenty-three. Well, he might, and then the field goal would be twenty-six. Yeah, it might not have mattered. Never mind. Okay, third and one, single back wing slot. Probably a rollout play. Lambo likes to roll out here. Actually going to go jet sweep. Goes jet sweep. At this point, Lambo's probably just trying to get in. So if he has to run the ball, he still needs to be in a hurry. But he needs to get, a, he needs to get seven. Good, good seven. Okay, perfect. Right here, in my opinion, you probably go for two. No, you don't go for two here. I thought he had 30. No, you go for seven here. So, okay. So now you got a minute and a half. And basically, if Dignity gets a first down, or at least you know, more than likely the game's over, he gets first down. Onside kick here is not a bad call. But, I mean, I guess if you think you can get it, it's not a bad call, but you are kind of conceding a field goal, which makes, it, you, makes you have to score seven or score six and get a two-point because – you can kick a field goal from here right now in this game. So kind of interesting decision. Could go either way, honestly, there. Shorten the field a little bit. Good defense there. Second and 10, there's the timeout. Like, he's right there. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, some of those mistakes that I talked about, some clock management, some picks, some even just basic, like, mismanagement of the situation, whether it be, you know, not not taking the cover three bomb away or allowing him to throw the ball deep to the sideline a lot. Some of that stuff led to this. To where Lambo, you know, it, it basically provided these opportunities, these little opportunities sprinkled throughout the second the end of the first half and end of the second half. Lambo finally capitalized on him. He had a lot of opportunities this game. As you look, as you watch this back, you probably see that. Um, we're going for the kill shot here. Ah, it's not open. Oh my gosh. Look at this. I I don't know what abilities we are rocking, but I I don't understand this. Look at this defender. So on my team, this is Charles Tillman with mid zone and flat zone. This is Brian Brand. He has Tillman over here. I don't know who this is. This on my team is Brian Branch. Guess what he has? Mid zone and flat zone. This is why you have mid zone and flat zone. On your slot corners. This is absolutely insane to me. Oh, he blitzed him. So it's a safety. Oh, it's the, okay, it's a linebacker. Same thing. That guy has mid zone for me too. Ah, if this is mid zone, this is a KO. That's Cam Chancellor who gets mid zone KO, I believe, for one AP. Wow. That is tough. And... It looks like he didn't get the first down. He does get the first down, and the game's over. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible way to lose the game. A lot you can learn from this one. I thought this was more of a blowout than it actually ended up being. Wow. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the film room, and I hope you like these film rooms. I love love making these. Uh, I learned so much from watching this tape back. And again, when I criticize or give critique to any players, trust me when I say they're a lot better than me. They've made it way farther than me in tournaments. I'm trying to just critique their game as I would critique my own game, just trying to get better, okay? So Dignity is obviously there for a reason. Played a really good tournament. 
the game he played, uh, the next game he plays is actually really a uh, pretty good game too. So we're going to be looking to learn from him and learn from Lambo and learn from everybody. I believe you can learn from anybody, um, but I do think in film rooms you need to be a little nitpicky to kind of try to understand the whys behind what is actually happening on your screen. Thanks for watching the video, and if you want to catch uh, all of my ebooks and stuff on this stuff and how I break the game down, it's all on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Cody Ballard.